Welcome back, my constitutional republic loving friend. How does this weekend find you? Hopefully you had a good time at Thanksgiving. Hopefully you got some time off of work, got to enjoy some good home cooking, enjoy time with loved ones and friends, and just hopefully could get out of some of the drama because no one likes drama. Since 2020, it has been an overabundance, so we have plenty, and I know, at least for myself, I don't want any more drama. <laughs> Done. Which is a little bit annoying because I'm having some drama with my microphone. Actually, it, it was me. So at some point, I turned my mic volume all the way down, and then I recorded a video that took me an hour. It was 35 minutes, and I was about to edit it, and there was no sound. There was nothing I could do to get it back. So this is take two. Uh, I did have other headlines. Some of them I scrapped, some of them I kept, and then I added some others. Uh, it's been an interesting week in the state of Maine. I'm not going to try to get ahead of the news. I'm just going to try and cover it so that we have an idea of what's on the horizon because knowing what's coming is can be a big deal. So um, let me try something. I have this hourglass because I love hourglasses. I'm going to set this and that way I'll be able to see it and it'll prompt me to keep moving. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to the other app that I had the mic problems with before, and this time I shouldn't have any issues, so we will continue from there. Over. All right, nerd, without any further ado, let's get into this week's news. So, if you thought illegal immigrants were only coming down from the southern border, you would in fact be wrong. 20 people apprehended after crossing the border illegally in Hogden. This was WAGME news. Um, that's what I saw first. Then I saw other articles from Spectrum News and others. They were Romanian nationals apprehended in Maine after border rush, officials say. Um, so not only that, but they also had Romanians with organized crime ties. So I'm going to include all of these articles so that way you can pick through them for yourself because there's just no way for me to be able to get into it all. But I wanted different pictures to be seen of. And this one seems pretty good. I mean, it has photos. Um, I don't know if these are necessarily the same ones. Well, it does say. Let's see. It's we're being overrun. CBP data shows 189,402 total encounters with migrants on the northern U.S. border in fiscal year 2023, up from 109,535,000 in 2002, and holy shit, 27,180 in 2021. This is an explosion. This is why this needs to be coming out. I mean, if this is true that they have crime, na, uh, 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 Romanians with organized crime ties, Romanians, like that's nowhere near Canada. It's nowhere near Mexico. People are coming from all over the world, criminals, to invade our great nation. And it's knowingly happening and what is being done about it. This is just, it's appalling. So in other news, Portland's 
$4.6 million, 179 bed shelter for migrants slated to open later this month. Um, November 29th is when it opens. And it is for asylum seekers only. Um, and make an estimated 100 to 120 beds open at the homeless service centers. So they're opening this asylum seeker only homeless shelter to make room f for even less, 100 to 120 beds, at the regular homeless shelter. People are coming in here illegally, some of them legally, but we're not taking care of our own people. Like, this is... I don't... <sighs> um, okay, I didn't mean to... Well, actually, so yeah. So while we're doing all this stuff for illegal immigrants or allowing illegal immigrants to come in, you have residents, this is from Bangor Daily News, residents of Maine Town fear rising sewer bills will force them to move. In Vassaboro, Vassaboro and this, um, the Vassaboro Sanitary District, an entity that operates independently from the town, serves roughly 220 customers, Treasurer Rebecca Goodrich said. Um, they pump wastewater to Winslow, and then the Kennebec Sanitary Division District in Waterville treats it. So, I mean, that's quite a distance for it to be moved. And people are just seeing their prices skyrocket. And it's getting to the point that um, it is so bad, it's going up 60%. And some people argue that they should have paid attention during the town halls and town meetings before this happened. But we're living our lives and we're living important, doing important things, raising children and just taking care of the economy, being out there working. We don't have time to be paying attention to all this stuff. So this is happening. We're being bamboozled behind our backs. And then we're being told that we weren't paying enough attention and it's already being voted on and it's already done. It's a little late to complain. And it's like... No, no, things need to slow down and we need to thoroughly investigate all of it before making moves because this is just, it's outrageous. Luckily, there was a proposal to expand main care to immigrants. It was voted down by legislative council. I can't even imagine if our main care went out to further get further stretched to the max for people that haven't paid into it, that honestly have no right to it. Like, I'm paying into Social Security and to, to main care, Medicare, whatever. I'm never going to be able to get that. I'm paying into it every single paycheck. Every six minutes when I'm getting paid, part of that is being siphoned off to an abyss that I will never see. So luckily, the legislative council did the right thing because that would have caused an uproar. I mean, right here you have main care dental patients face long waits and has to drive for care. Caitlin Andrews from the Maine Monitor. Lawmakers expended the state-run insurance to cover adult dental care in 2022, but a year later, patients struggle to find a dentist who will take them. So this story is about Sarah Armas. Um, she had bad teeth since she was a child. Um, she's autistic, so hearing the sights and sounds bothered her, which led to poor um, oral health keeping. But she was a child. She takes better care of her teeth now, and she thought maybe she would go in and get it fixed. But since the spring, Stonington resident has been unable to find a practice near her that accepts main care and does not have months-long wait list. Her partner was able to find a dentist in York County who said, sh who she said told her 
who she said told her they would see her, provided she was able to make the multi-hour drive on short notice. Um, here's a picture of her. And so here she is, a born and bred Mainer who is a tax-paying citizen, paid into it, was thinking that now that she's an adult and all of this is being taken care of, she'd be able to get into it. But wrong. Like, it's just... We aren't going in the correct direction. This should have been an easy solution. I get if there's not enough dentists, but some of it sounds like they just don't accept main care, and that's a problem. And so... It, sometimes it's hard bringing these news to you because I don't have a solution. I just want to bring the headlines to the forefront, but it also feels kind of... Uh, powerless when I'm like, hey, here's an issue. Okay, let's just move on. I like to have solutions, but it's just... So Maine was eradicating veteran homelessness, then it shot back up. This is a great story. So this is um, former U.S. Marine Sergeant Ben Dermon, uh, DeMerchant. And in 2019, four years ago, Ben DeMerchant stood outside a homeless shelter here trying to muster the courage to go inside and claim his bed. This 36-year-old Fort Fairfield native had been a sergeant in the Marine Corps. He served for four years and was deployed twice to Afghanistan. Life under service was a struggle, leading to drug addiction, alcoholism, and short spell in jail before he was given a second chance by the state's Veterans Court in August in Augusta and entered a treatment program. There was a Kennebec County resident requirement for that. Since the merch, the merchant, the mer, the merchant, why am I struggling? Couldn't find a place in Augusta. He was given a bed at the Bread of Life Ministries homeless shelter on Hospital Street, which was the first in the state to cater only to veterans. I like that. Veterans should absolutely be taken care of. And if we need veteran only homeless shelters, I am 1000 about that. At the time, he was one of 14 people at the shelter. This week, he will host 14 friends and family members at his new home in Waterville for Thanksgiving dinner. Like, that's incredible. This helped him. This kind of thing got him out of that situation. And as someone that served his country, he should absolutely have been taken care of. All veterans should be. And so if we can have more stories like Ben DeMerchant, then we absolutely need to. And... um. I don't know if that's his current home, but if it is, that's incredible. He really did well for himself, and we were eradicating it, but now it's shooting back up. So what are we going to do? I want to follow up. This is from the main man accused of assaulting officer in Waterville, arrested in Greenville, woman also taken into custody. So it's Ashley, Libby, and Ricky Gould. I mean, they look like they're some people that need some severe care and attention. They did some awful acts, and they need to face the consequences for that. That being said, it seems like they've already hard, had a hard life, and it just feels a shame to kick people when they're down. So just pray for them and hopefully they get they face the consequences proudly that they walked into you can't do the crime if you can't do the time this is good news as well top main democrat wants to rein in strict heat pump rebate rules uh, lawmakers will consider rolling back strict new rules requiring Mainers to disconnect fossil fuel burning furnaces and boilers to claim the largest heat pump incentives. Hey, get a lot of money if you're going to be cold and suffer throughout the winter at various points because of X, Y, and Z reasons. You won't have any heat at times. You may not. You may not for different reasons, but you'll get the most back. No, we're not ready to step away from fossil fuels yet. We are not there. We are not ready. We're not there yet. Um, this is a proposal from state, uh, from Senate President Troy Jackson, a Democrat from Allagash. 
he would seek to find some middle ground by removing some of the new rebate rules on installing home heat pump systems in specific areas of the state based on temperatures, his spokesperson Christy Kirby said Monday without sharing more details on the proposal. Okay, not many details at all, but it's a start. And it's coming from a Democrat, so that's good news. It seems like we can have some real bipartisan conversations here. He is up in Aroostook County, so I mean, it's up there. Uh, Allagash, sorry, he's up in Allagash. So, I mean, people are woodsy, rural people out there, and his constituents aren't going to like being forced to disconnect fossil fuels when they are absolutely nowhere near ready, even with the rebate. So what is Janet Mills concerned about this whole time while we are dealing with all these issues? Making broadband affordable. We have all these issues and this, this is what she's focusing on, talking about, bringing our attention to. Okay. But we should give her a chance to speak. Let's hear what she has to say. In today's world, having affordable high-speed internet is as fundamental as electricity, heat, and water. So if we want a strong economy and a thriving state, we've simply got to have it. Hello, this is Governor Janet Mills, and thank you for listening. Well, since I've taken office, we've worked very hard to expand affordable high-speed broadband across Maine, especially in rural areas. And in 2021, I signed landmark legislation which created the Maine Connectivity Authority. That's a new organization, a new entity focused on ensuring that every person in our state can have affordable quality internet connections in order to work, to study, run a business, visit family, or get health care remotely. In the two years since I signed that legislation, the Connectivity Authority has used state and federal funds to connect over 53,000 homes and businesses to the internet. I'm very proud of that progress, and I have promised the Maine people that whoever wants a high-speed, reliable internet connection will be able to access it by the end of next year. We're making progress towards modernizing our internet infrastructure. Thanks to a $272 million grant, Maine received under the Biden administration's Broadband Equity Access and Deployment, or BEAD, program from the bipartisan infrastructure law supported by our congressional delegation. That's the largest grant award Maine has ever received to build out our broadband internet network. The Connectivity Authority is working hard to expand broadband access across Maine, but an important part of that effort is making sure that Maine people can afford it as well. That's why the Affordable Connectivity Program, or ACP, is also very important. That program was also created by President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law, and it made more than 230,000 households in Maine eligible to receive a discount on their broadband bill every month. So far, about 94,000 Maine families have enrolled, and that's good news, but the funding for this essential program could run out next April unless Congress acts. In short, the households in Maine that just gained access to affordable internet could lose it. That's why earlier this week, I joined 25 of my fellow governors on both sides of the aisle to urge Congress to provide more funding for the Affordable Connectivity Program. In our joint letter, we wrote that, quote, closing our nation's digital divide transcends politics. Whether you live in a rural area, a suburb, or a city, every American needs access to high-speed internet. Preserving the ACP will allow us to build upon the progress we've made in expanding connectivity rather than falling behind in a mission we cannot afford to lose. So I will keep pushing along with my fellow governors for more funding for the ACP. But in the meantime, every eligible Maine family should enroll to get a discount of up to $30 a month on their internet bill. Eligibility is based on income. For example, if you're a family of four and your household income is less than $80,000, you qualify for this discount. You can find more information about how to enroll in the Affordable Connectivity Program, ACP, at getacp.org backslash Maine. Okay, that's enough. 
Oh, it's probably going to be echoey. I forgot to pause my mic. But that's how I turned my mic off last time. So I just was doing some quick math. She says she's helped connect 53,000 homes and businesses to the internet in the two years. That's point... I don't know if this is going to show up because it's not part of the screen. 0.04%. 0.04% in two years she's helped with this for up to $30 a month on their internet bill. I agree. Internet is important in this day and age. But electricity, heating, shelter, water, those things are vital. And they are going up exorbitantly. And you're worried, Governor Janet Mills about making broadband affordable? Why wouldn't you talk to Biden and say that 272 million grant money that you gave to Maine, we're having some emergencies in our state and it turns out that broadband isn't on the top 30. So we are requesting that we get to use this money as our state sees fit since it is our state money. I mean, it comes from the US but all states should pay this, should be able to say this. Hey, you're giving us this grant money for this thing, but we find that it's kind of useless. And actually what we could really use are better electricity connections, cheaper rates, our rent and mortgages being neutralized and decreased in some cases, not to mention just gasoline getting to work, oil to heat your house just to survive. So I just... I'm kind of offended that Janet Mills is worried about making broadband affordable. Like, that's the hill that she's fighting right now. Get off of that hill, Governor Janet Mills, and come over to where your constituents are telling you to be. Because you are a public servant. Start acting like it. This is... City Council gives initial proposal to zoning changes in Lake Auburn watershed. It has been a contentious issue here in the Lewiston-Auburn area because Lake Auburn is what gives water to um, the surrounding area. And they there are different groups of people that want to develop right alongside of it, putting at risk that lake and the water and the people that depend upon it. It's, there's a lot to it. Um, this is a big issue, um, but it's just highlights bigger issues across the state of Maine of what we need to be doing, what we need to be considering, how we protect our lakes and rivers, but how we also expand and progress. How do we find a middle ground for that? This, I mean, this is kind of drama, and I don't like drama. Um, I do just kind of want to weigh in. The Mega Millions $1.35 billion winner sues his baby mama for telling his parents of win and wants 100000 for each person she told. That's a lot of money, but she did sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, and she chose not to stay silent. So that does show some indiscretion, and it does show some scheming or backstabbery. Uh, I can understand why John Doe, as he wants to be referred, one, why he wants to remain as John Doe. I understand that. Uh, people that find or are Mega Bucks winners or Powerball winners or whatever, they often find cousins and family members they'd never known about. So I understand why. Uh, um, okay, so he decided to receive his money at once, which left him with $498 million after taxes. That's what grates me. Okay, so he got it all at once, but that money has to be there because people are literally buying those and it's going into something. So he's getting almost $1 billion in taxes. No, with $498 million, you can't really complain. But since I didn't receive either, I think it's egregious that 
one billion dollars is basically taken in taxes and where does that go who oversees it who accounts for this money who can we hold accountable when stuff happens with this money it is so sus i don't partake in lottery or gambling but it's just if you do it should be that it's in a pot and the people that that do it grab from it and it's there and i don't i know there's a difference when you take money all at once or over the years i get it but still so just for some pop culture open casting call main teen wanted for new major movie role this is going to be for the new karate kid which is pretty cool the karate kid even the remake one was pretty good um, now it looks like we're getting another one, according to Screen Crush. This movie will star Ralph Macchio, Daniel from the original movie, and martial arts superstar Jackie Chan. That's awesome. Um, it's slated to come out December 13th, 2024. So this could change the life of a main teenager. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, there was casting calls for Empire Falls, which... Uh, not many people heard about, but it did have um, Paul Newman and uh, Helen Hunt and um, uh, Burt, Burt Reynolds. Oh, no, I think I got that wrong. So I'll, I'll have the names listed up here so you guys can see them. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. I remember that I didn't get a part in it. My dad and I both went and it was... An experience I was super nervous I was young I had blue glasses blue tinted glasses I'm pretty sure at the time so total nerd and but it was an experience and um, I do know the kid that did end up getting a major role and he ended up with a lot of money from it and it could have changed his life for the better he is no longer with us um, I don't know if that plays into the money that he got, but I don't think it helped. I don't know how much worse it made it, however. So that being said, whichever teen you do get this movie position, just it's better to have some stability around you because Hollywood is anything but stable. Um, this is some good news from the area. Christine Stokes open ca opens Callie's Eats. Uh, the coming soon sign at corner of Route 231 and Estes Road piqued the curiosity of many passerby this fall. With a shed, a food truck, and a tent with picnic tables, Kelly Eats opened a few weeks ago, offering delicious, delish, delicious dinner options like soups, tacos, and burgers freshly prepared to go. Uh, it's in New Gloucester. That's where she's from. Um, she's worked at a couple different places. You can read the article yourself. Uh, but I did see um, it's all fresh, small batch cooking, no frozen french fries or chicken tenders. Um, this I thought was really cool. Callie's Eats has been open part-time and will continue through the holidays. Christmas trees, homemade soups, breads, sweet treats, and cider will be available. Prepared take-home meals such as shepherd's pit, <laughs> I'm sure it means shepherd's pie, baked zitis, pot pies, and bowls will be added. Christine heartily welcomes feedback on the dishes they serve. I want to offer what people want and enjoy. So go ahead and follow her. You can see the schedule and the menu and plan to stop by and pick something up. Um, switching over to referendum news after the fact, we voted almost a month ago at this point. Darlings sues Versant after power company disconnected solar facility. <laughs> like, go figure. Versant, we're already having problems and we just, we just voted in favor of you. Like, I wish we hadn't. But we sure did. Darlings is accusing Versant of violating an, violating an agreement between the two companies when Versant disconnected the car dealership solar facility for three months. 
Um, it's saying that there were some repairs that Versant knew it needed to take, but did not uh, reveal that to the dealership darlings. And then when the time came for the repairs to be made, Versant put the um, repairs under darlings. And it, they didn't give them any notice of um, routine maintenance. And what they're doing is not ma routine maintenance, but actually a major overhaul of a 62-year-old substation. So they knew, they knew it was going to be coming, and they didn't do anything. They didn't warn. So I am not a fan of Rosant or CMP. I did not vote in favor of them. This comes no surprise to me. It is just unfortunate, however. Here's another one. PAC behind right to repair referendum faces fine for donor disclosure rules violation. Main public, Steve Missler. So it's saying that they needed to, the staff of ethics says the Automated Right of Repair Committee failed to notify major donors on time on six occasions during the campaign. So because this commission failed to do its job, we, the constituents, the voters, the taxpayers, are punished when we clearly didn't want this, but someone failed to do their job or was bribed into not doing their job. I'm not saying it was. I'm just saying that could be a possibility. We, the taxpayers, are now punished. I don't think so. I do not think so. Um, some more terrifying news before uh, getting into... Make the cover of Texas Monthly, okay. you know. Listen, when the wild hogs make the cover of Texas Monthly, you know this is a menace to be reckoned with. State wildlife officials say they are, they are more destructive and feral hogs in Texas than any other state right now. They're destroying lawns in McKinney. We've heard about this. So we sent Robbie Owens out there. She's been talking to folks in that area who are frustrated and they say they just cannot fight this problem by themselves. Hmm, the little piggies went to market. But these massive smelly beasts are here to stay. And now they're making a mess in this McKinney neighborhood. They dig up everything for here looking through grubs. Homeowner and HOA president Ryan Kiever. But it was big. It was, uh, I mean, it was at least... I don't know, 200 pounds, but at least 150 pounds. It was big. The near nightly sightings have left neighbors frustrated, afraid. All, all of the above. I walk my dog every day and I haven't in days because I'm a little bit nervous to do that. Michelle Hubbard has been gathering the videos and pictures from neighbors to document the issue while reaching out to the city for help. Now, a lot of that is because we're having a lot of construction, so they're moving down again down that green belt and coming into um, our urban areas. Still, Hubbard says explanations are not solutions. Other cities around here, we've found out South Lake, Capel, they've, they've set up some traps, they've dealt with it on some level, and that's, I think, what we want. But they'll need to act fast. If left unchecked, a feral hog population can triple in just one year. And with no known predators, the hogs have the upper hand. And the damage to lawns, gardens, and golf courses can get costly quickly. We replanted everything since then. How long is it going to stay this way? They're going to different areas, right? But they're, but they're not going away. In McKinney, Robbie Owens, CBS News, Texas. Yeah. Hunt them. No known predators? <laughs> Obviously, you need to be careful bringing in predators, but... I mean, super pigs, um, it's like Minnesota, uh, Montana, Idaho. Out west is where... Out northern west is where they're dealing with this heavily, but here in Maine, we're, we're there. Pennsylvania. I know I have viewers in Pennsylvania. It's not far-fetched to think that it won't be long before things stretch on down or over and down so yeah that's crazy so just to end on a good note though this is 97.5 wokq number one for new country
these two main towns have been named the most beautiful in America. Can you guess which towns they might be? If you said Camden and Bar Harbor, you would be right. And I can agree, those are some beautiful places. If you haven't visited, it's definitely worth the time. All right, so I'm going to switch back over to my other program, so I'll see you there. Good news, everything fully recorded over. Oh, and I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention to that. I'm sure it ran out. It would have run out twice, so <laughs> I tried. But this has just been a week in review. I wanted to just highlight different news articles, different um, headlines that had occurred that you may or may not have heard about, and just to give some different input to get a different narrative out there. Because oftentimes I read these articles and they're presented in one way, and then I read the comments and people are not agreeing <laughs> with the articles almost ever. And if they do, it's very few and far between. So that's when I started to realize that there's a certain narrative being pushed and then there's reality. And most people see the reality and understand it, but they're being persuaded because mainstream legacy media is only saying one thing or allowing one topic to be pushed. So um, let me know what you think about this kind of format. It was, it was quick. I went over them quickly. It wasn't necessarily a quick video. This video is still going to be reaching towards 40 minutes. But if you were here with me, which if you're still watching, I thank you for being this far in the video with me. It helps the viewership incredibly. So I deeply appreciate it. Um, and so it's, uh, it's good to get more eyes on this, on these topics and to focus on this and to talk about it as a community and to figure out what we can do. So thank you again for making it this far in the video. I look forward to hearing your comments. Um, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe, like the video and leave some comments down below. And until the next video, I hope you have a great day, my constitutional republic-loving friend.